Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I have been a financial analyst, a financial journalist, and I have worked in uh, research and development in telecommunications and filed several patents. Tonight, I'm going to be addressing the situation in Libya as of today, December 29th. I haven't done any work on Libya in about a month. Um, taking a break and trying to absorb all of what went down last year. But now I have put together some information I want to share with you. <clears throat> um, the International Criminal Court has uh, allowed uh, the new authority in Libya, the National Transitional Council, to investigate uh, the war crimes that occurred in Libya against the supporters of the Gaddafi regime. They have also, uh, articles have come out by the BBC that they are also uh, permitting Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi, the son of Gaddafi's most politically prominent child, uh, to be tried in Libya. Um, this is um, another example of how broken our justice system is by corruption in the West. <clears throat> you see, the International Criminal Court, once it issues a warrant, cannot delegate the trial to any other authority. The prosecutor's office is not supposed to get involved in making determinations of venues. That's only for the judges to decide. The only course the ICC is permitted to take, according to its own charter, which was uh, signed by 170 countries, is they must take them essentially to The Hague. Uh, so I don't understand why there isn't more controversy about this. Now, Human Rights Watch, which has been a bit of a uh, pro-Western force in Libya, <clears throat> on the whole, uh, covering up for NATO excesses and uh, focusing more on the loyalists, has called for the surrender of Saif al-Islam to uh, the ICC. <clears throat> now, what we've got in Libya is a situation where you have a country with a army the size of the New York City Police Department, about 30,000 in both cases, uh, and, a, and a country with a population about the size of New York City that was attacked 12,000 times by NATO, essentially uh, completely eliminating all of the armed service men and women in Libya <clears throat> and uh, leveling of two cities in Libya, virtual leveling of two cities in uh, Libya, uh, Sirt and Beni Walid, uh, and then of course Tawerga was destroyed by the rebels. And um, to give people who don't know much about Libya um, just a brief taste of uh, just how bad things are in Libya uh, wouldn't be easy, uh, but uh, let me give you an example of a quotation. Do not want a Western intervention as in Libya, which with each passing day, the information coming out of Libya shows the disaster that that country has become. That was Tariq Ali, who's a very eminent intellectual, uh, on December 28th. Uh, there's still uh, atrocities occurring in Libya on a daily basis against the people who supported the former government. Now, what's happened in Libya, I gave you the idea of the size of their army being faced down with a uh, military 500 times larger. Um, Libya had $10 trillion worth of gold, oil, cash, natural gas, and 400 years supply of Ice Age water in a region, the Sahara, it's very tight on water. Um, so Libya was a vast treasure house that was very lightly guarded. And uh, we went in there and we changed who's in charge to people who are uh, essentially um, our proxies. Now these people, if you go to CNN this week, there's articles about Al-Qaeda links into uh, the Transitional National Council. Um, so we've put in charge jihadists uh, militarily. I'm not talking about all of the support, 
uh, we put in charge of jihadists uh, to uh, run Libya. And we'll get to why that is so. But essentially, you have a country, a sovereign state. Um, there's some small uprisings that occur in that sovereign state. Uh, a a uh, series of UN resolutions are developed and approved, claimed, claiming there's a, an emergency. Things are done that normally need investigation. Charges are made which are unsubstantiated. Uh, and turn out later to be false of all sorts of atrocities by the Gaddafi government, which have uh, been debunked. <clears throat> so, uh, but what we're talking about is ten trillion dollars. So the ICC cannot allow a country to try someone for a crime against humanity. Uh, once the warrant has been issued. Yet, in Libya, they are doing so. Uh, how is this possible? I would like to know. Um, and why would they do it? They've also said that they'll have the Transitional National Council investigate the murder of Gaddafi. Although, to be fair to the ICC, they claim they're going to monitor it and report in May. And there's going to be an election for a new prosecutor. Ocampo has certainly not been a friend to Libya in this uh, uh, last nine months. He's, uh, by not being even-handed, it will cause greater problems for even the people that oppose Gaddafi in the long term because the process of reconciliation is going to be damaged because it was the, 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 the political, the legal, and the military wars were all fought very dirty and in a very bullying fashion. So when you take a small group of militants, arm them, attack their opponents, the Libyan army, uh, 12,000 times with uh, planes, and uh, also infiltrate in soldiers from Qatar to assist these rebels all over the country. All of this in violation of the very charter that was written. And then ask those who you have basically given $10 trillion of assets to, to investigate the crimes that they themselves committed. It really makes one I'm not even sure if scratch one's head is right. It's logical. There's ten trillion dollars that's been stolen. Um, now it may get restored at some point, but there's no guarantee of that. Now the brilliant thing about all this is that Hillary Clinton can basically tell Hakim El Belhaj and the Al Qaeda and the Islamists and the jihadists and the Salafists in Libya, we made you and we can take you out. How long would it take for them to put in some other party? Uh, because by allowing Islamist jihadists to run the show there, it's very easy to reactivate the NATO war machine because the political problem in getting the population to allow them to come back in is very simple to manipulate. It's Al Qaeda. Oh, we help the Libyan people to get liberation, but now we're going to have to liberate them again. It is like putting a burglar in charge of investigating the burglary. Not surprisingly, the burglar will conclude that the property owners should never have owned their property and asked for it. <clears throat> now, what do you, we need to do as uh, citizens that want to see justice in the world and not to have our governments murder and steal? No investigation of war crimes in Libya can be done with real hopes of truth from belligerents in the conflict. The United States, France, NATO, none of them can be involved because they are belligerents. You cannot have a judge investigate a fight and put one of the fighters in charge of the proceedings. It's obvious. You can't have the TNC or the NTC, depending on how you like to say it, in charge. You couldn't have Gaddafi loyalists in charge. You need a neutral party. Uh, which is hard to do when you have this many different interests with their fingers in it. Russia has called for an audit of the death toll in Libya inflicted by NATO. And we need to be aware that if the NATO-sponsored TNC bites their master's hand, Clinton can tell them, as they say in North Africa, we can buy you and we can sell you. We can take you out. 
Flood Group is more vulnerable to a Western media blitz claiming we help the Libyans liberate themselves. Unfortunately, extremists have seized the government. We now have to go back in and help liberate them again. How easy to convince the people of the West to support another intervention with Al-Qaeda heavily involved with the actual fighters in Libya who gained every inch of ground through massive NATO aerial drone and special forces attacks. Over 12,000 attacks, as well as Qatar, proudly stating that they had troops with every single armed group in Libya. All of this in violation of the United Nations 1970 and 1973, which required an arms embargo be imposed on both sides and the African Union be used to uh, establish peace talks and a ceasefire. Why is the only male heir of Gaddafi with any political uh, uh, power being illegally held in Libya rather than surrendered to the ICC. Because his trial would expose that actually there is a lot of dirt on many people's hands in transferring this largest treasure chest in the world into hands picked by the West. This is illegal. The ICC cannot allow Libya to try Saif al Islam al Gaddafi. It is against its own charter. I do not understand why this is not more controversial. My name is Alexander Hagen. Thank you, good night, and good luck.